We're Robin and Steve. In the last instalment, we left off hanging out with this very special bird, the tucker hare. And many others. Let's not forget the tui. The wind was building and Tiri Tiri Matangi was becoming a quite a rolly anchorage. We headed to Kawo Island, to Mansion House Bay. In 1862, Sir George Grey, Governor of New Zealand, purchased Kawo Island and filled it with plants and animals from around the world. There are some truly stunning trees here, but the wallabies he brought from Australia bred up and are now pests here and in the South Island. We didn't know what to expect here, but we had a great time exploring the grounds and watching peacocks be fabulous. Peahens are less flamboyant, but still fabulous. Up until 1839, the Maori occupied this island. But in 1839, the island was purchased by a land company, no doubt at a bargain price, and with big plans for forestry and mining. This copper mine built in 1844 didn't work so well, since many of the shafts were below sea level. The pumps couldn't keep up, leading to suboptimal work conditions. The mine closed in 1855 after around 3,000 tonnes of copper had been extracted. From here, we were to retrace our steps a bit for a family reunion. First stepping stone, Motu Reka Reka Island, where we kayaked past a stingray en route to this shipwreck. This ship was deliberately sunk with the intention of making a break wall. Yeah, beautiful. That's very pretty. But sadly, its placement wasn't so good. Wow. So here it rots in the shallows. It's a small island, so our walk mainly involved checking out rock pools. Make sure you get the head in. That's an interesting part. That's cool. Well, I saw that. I'll be dreaming about that now. We'd had to rush away from Tiri Tiri Matangi Island to get shelter. And so now we got to return and check out the side we'd missed. The walk is information packed, with displays like this one showing how researchers use these special contraptions to monitor which animals have been walking through. It's important that this island is kept predator free to protect the endangered birds. This time we got to see the information centre, which showed how barren this landscape was in 1960. It's looking much better. Farewell, Tiri Tiri Matangi off to seek shelter at Waihiki Island. Just around from Matiatia Bay, there was a sculpture trail. Actually, the track just went past rich people's houses with beautiful artworks in their yards. What a nice way to share their wealth. Our boat is anchored right where the ferry comes in from Auckland. It's pretty special to be able to give my cousins a wave as they came in. They've come all the way from Australia and we got to meet up and even go to a gin distillery. Just for some contrast, from there it was into the bowels of the boat to run the water maker. It's important that this works well before we sail north. We left the Hauraki Gulf and retraced our steps north this time finding shelter on the other side of Kawo Island. This is Vivian Bay. From 
Kawo Island, we set off for Whangarei. If you like contrasting landscapes, come to Whangarei. It's hard to capture the scale of this operation. Oceans of logs are piled onto giant ships. The massive log moving equipment is dwarfed by the ship. We found these log munching machines strangely entertaining. Wondered where these logs were getting shipped to. Pilot boats helped this container ship make its way out into the channel. And this is the view we had from our anchorage where we had to wait out some more bad weather. While we were stuck in bad winds, I made a delicious fruit cake. It didn't last long. We watched the sun set over the sea of logs, destined for faraway lands. We were in for a spicier than expected sail. As we passed the spectacular brimhead, on the way out of Whangarei. From less than 10 knots, it gusted to 30 knots. So we quickly reefed the sails. Even after reducing the sails, we were going fast. With the help of a bit of current, We were back in familiar ground now. Hole in the wall, Motu Kokako Island. We'd been told that Cyclone Gabriel kicked up so much sea spray that the Manuka and Kanuka forests were damaged. This is back in Oke Bay. The tides were just right to go through a much smaller hole in the wall. I am. Oh, oh bugs. back in the Bay of Islands now, slowly making our way back to Opua to do some boat work. Next stop, Wai Wai Terea Island, where we found a blowhole, a sideways blowhole. New Zealand, with your fluffy grass and zero snakes. We were just beginning to be able to switch off our Tasmanian instinct to always be on the lookout for snakes. The water here could get beautifully clear and we did some great snorkeling. revisited Moturua Island and its snorkel trail before entering Opua Marina. It's even hard for us to remember where we've been, so check out this map recap of our Hauraki Golf adventures. The specific gravity of our old batteries had confirmed that they were dead. Steve had the heavy job of swapping them out and then wired them in, and they worked. Next, the wind vane needed some love. Steve rebuilt it, and our friends from Genki turned up just in time to help reinstall it. We then jumped aboard Genki for our very first sailing race. The 
full of kawaii were going nuts. And so were the birds. Just to make the race course a little bit more exciting, we cut through the busy ferry route. We felt like we were all quite a good team. And at the same time, we're pretty relaxed about the whole competition thing. Slowly, fancy boats with carbon fibre everything overtook us. And then did this. Is that allowed? Maybe. Competitions are weird. We came second last and had a lovely time. Our bulk order of groceries was delivered to the dock. And even better, it was in paper bags, not plastic. Well done, Countdown. Where we're headed to, this sort of stuff will be hard to get. So we've filled every nook and cranny with tinned goods and dry ingredients. That done, we set off, only to see a pod of pilot whales. Right in Opua. That was unexpected. Now we're pretty much just waiting for a weather window to be able to sail north. Sticking around the Bay of Islands. I nearly finished the film there, but then I remembered our underwater footage. We didn't film in the prettier place around the corner. This is more representative of what we saw. We've heard it be described as Kina Barren. Some beautiful fish and barren seafloor. Things are out of whack here due to overfishing. There are too many sea urchins now, or Kina. In this place, there was still some seaweed left for the Kina to eat, but not enough bigger fish to eat the Kina. So there's not enough seaweed, and so on. Anyway, dolphins. going to be an interval. So get yourselves a snack and then just live life normally for a week or four. We're sailing away from internet so who knows when the next episode will be. 